This show is not intended to offend, harm, belittle, accuse, instigate, objectify, etc. Any person, place, thing, establishment, entity, or business of any kind, color, creed, faith, belief, condition, creation, etc. On this show, I will speak my mind and give my opinion on the topics at hand. Any offense in anything taken out of context is your fault. What's up? What it do, man? It's your boy, Daddy Gamer, aka Player One, a guy himself, with another episode of The Gamers Den. If this is your first time here. This is the show where I go over video game news tech news, and a little bit of everything else. And we start this thing off with a thing called Level 1 News. Yes, sir. Before we start off, shout out to everybody for tapping in and watching this episode of the show. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe wherever you see this. And shout out to you if you're on devthegamer.com. With that being said, dev the cam- oh, wow. DevTheGamer.com is up and live right now. You can go on there and watch this very show, The Gamers Den. You can also watch High Score Sundays. You can also watch Cannot Beat the Time. You can also watch The Indie Corner. All of these are shows and things that I do and have created that you can watch on there. Obviously, if you are subscribed or on these other platforms where these shows exist, you can watch those as well. You can also follow me on YouTube. So this is YouTube.com slash DevTheGamer. This is twitter.com slash devgamerxiv. Instagram, same thing. Twitter, I mean, instagram.com slash devgamerxiv. With that being said, we do have, we only, we only got a few articles to go through today, but uh, we do have a lot of things to talk about. This is very important stuff. Um, you know, this is the more important things anyway. And um, yeah, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right. Headline reads, Adriana Lee sues OTK and its several creators for defamation. What the hell? Yes, we starting off with some Twitch news. Y'all know I love me some Twitch news. But um, so I don't know who this person is. I've heard of OTK, but uh, I don't know who Adriana Lee is. Apparently, this is a picture of her right here. Uh, she's attractive. If this comes across your desk, you are attractive in my line. Um, but apparently she's suing them for defamation. I have no idea what happened. You know, I don't know what would be going on with these content creator teams. I don't, you know, keep up with content creator teams whatsoever. I'm making my own content. I'm doing my own thing. I don't pay attention or care too much or at all about anybody else. What the hell? With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Twitch streamer Adriana Lee has recently filed a defamation lawsuit against OTK, a collaborative venture established in 2020 by several prominent game streamers and some of its creators. The exact reasons for the lawsuit have not been disclosed, but it seems to be related to the events that took place between Adriana Lee and Crazy Slick. I don't know who Crazy Slick is either. I know y'all about to kill me. Bro, I don't, I don't understand who these people are. For those who are unaware, towards the end of 2022, serious allegations of sexual assault what the hell? Emerged against Crazy Slick, relating to an incident that took place in 2021 involving Adriana. The allegations first came to light during an online dispute between Miss Giff and Trainwreck. Later, Adriana published a detailed statement on Twitlonger in which she described being allegedly assaulted by Crazy Slick while she was unconscious at a birthday party. Hold up. Adriana also accused Miss, Miss Kiff and his ex-girlfriend, Maya Higa, or they name drop, who were living with Crazy Slick at the time, of pressuring her to downplay the incident to protect Crazy Slick's reputation. Hold up. Hey. Yeah, man, this is wild. This is mad wild. I'm going to read a little bit more. After these events, OTK faced significant backlash and took action, including the suspension of its co-owner, Miskiff. What the hell? And the commissioning of a third-party investigation. In January 2023, the investigation concluded that there was no direct evidence of Miskiff attempting to cover up Lee's sexual assault, which was a relief for OTK. 
However, this relief was short-lived as Adriana Lee filed a defamation lawsuit on March 16, 2023 in the 200th district in court, district court in Austin, Texas. Excuse me. The lawsuit named OTK and three popular content creators, namely Ms. Giff, Maya Higa, and Crazy Slick. What the hell? Well, apparently she ain't done, man. Like, this is just, this is just crazy. So, um, yeah, man, we, we talking about this today. I'm bringing this up because we have to, um, we have to establish some grounds here and, and I need to speak on this. So in these content creator groups, right? This is one, this whole incident, Adriana Lee, this whole stuff with OTK. Once again, again, I don't know who any of these people is. I don't watch their content. I don't care for their content. With that being said, because I make content myself and because, you know, I stream every now and then myself, I'm not, here's the thing about collaborative efforts, right? Nowadays, you have these content houses, these streamer houses, like people are intentionally making content and it's working for some people and it's not working for some people. I'm not saying I'm hating or I wish otherwise, vice versa, whichever way you go. No, I'm just pointing out the fact. So what you got to understand is, you have hidden agendas. You got different types of people around. A lot of these people don't nobody probably even know. Like these people probably built up a rapport maybe a year or so or a couple months down the line just offline on Twitch. But when you got some of these people taking it serious, so they got legal paperwork, notarizations. They got things in writing, like legal, like standing documents that, okay, we are in partnership. We are in business. We are in, this is what it is. And on that lens and that angle, you got to position yourself accordingly, because at this point you join one of these content houses, one of these content groups, and they might join, they might own your content. They might, you know, whatever, whatever, based on the, based on that specific contract. Now let's go to the people side, right? Let's just go to person to person morality, so to speak. In these cases, this is what happens, right? Not saying this is what's going to happen all the time, but you have to take into account. You got different types of people. It's all these different stereotypes about gamers, streamers, et cetera, et cetera. They weird, they this, they that. But then everybody on Twitch now, everybody trying to stream, everybody trying to make content, like, hold up. Like where they do that at? I suppose you're supposed to stand on your square. Now you, now you about to do the shit that that's like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it just don't make no sense to me, but this is what people do, right? Now, she was in this group, whatever the case. Now some stuff happened at a party and at parties, this is the type of stuff that can happen. Will it happen nine times out of 10? Probably not. But you got some men who can or cannot control themselves and or you got women who go well and way beyond their limits and put themselves in situations that don't make sense. So with this all being said, um, I don't condone none of this type of behavior if it comes out to be true. All of this is just rumor and, you know, has to be proven. So on that side of the things, that's my take on that. On the business side of things and, or make doing this collaborative effort with groups and working with that, nah, I'm not ever going, that's my issue, right? That's my issue, right? You know, for a while, you know, I've been making content for a long time. You know, I've made collaborative effort, you know, videos here and there, not a lot. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just, I don't want, I don't want to do business with nobody. Like I'm going to just keep it real. What the hell? I don't want to do business with people. I don't want to do whatever because I, because I myself always think I can do it better. So I just do it myself. So there's no reason for me to be like, okay, let me just go ahead, grab this person, grab this person, grab this person. Let's make a group. Let's do this. I, that's doing too much, especially in today's day and era. Like everybody is too much of their own person. You can't, you can't ring people in line. Oh, well, you're not a leader. No, I am leader. The problem is I'm not about to fight you. If I'm leading you, that means I'm for you. I'm with you. So if I tell you to do something or direct you in the place to go or the direction to go, you should just go. Why the fuck is you giving me backlash? And that's the fucking problem. I'm not fighting you because if I fight you, I'm going to knock your ass out. But see, that's the fucking problem. Everybody wants to be the guy or the girl, and you're not supposed to be the guy or the girl, because clearly it's not you, because if it was, you would have been that already. What the hell? I'm just saying. So, um, 
as far so once again as far as these content groups these content houses all this stuff nah man i just made my own content this is why i got deadgamer.com this is why all of that like i'm working on stuff and i'm about to be just pushing content out on my own platform doing whatever the case that way i can avoid a lot of lot of lot of bs i might have took the stairs to get here but hey i'm here you know what i'm saying so uh that's gonna be that now let's go ahead and get into the last thing in level two news all right headline i mean level one news excuse me what the hell all right level one news headline reads polygon which is matic if y'all don't know becomes second largest gaming blockchain in march after surge in activity hold up yes yeah, sir so yeah we got some little crypto news we got some crypto gaming news now this is important because there's a lot going on in the world right now especially with everybody talking about the dollar everybody talking about whatever in this in this conversation right here is going to lead us into level two news so um I, i've been telling y'all about crypto gaming every now and then you know just crypto get hip to this stuff be aware of it at the at the very least and um this is crazy you know now i knew that polygon you know they had some games and they had a little a little bit of stuff on their blockchain on they on they on they thing but i wasn't aware it was it was booming like this so um let's just go ahead and get into it and see what's going on layer two scaling solution polygon matic is establishing a name in the gaming sector following impressive growth in daily unique active wallets last month so uh we're just going to call those do alls uh do alls or just unique wallets we we'll just call the uws i don't i don't know i, I just want to say do all we just gonna say do all what the hell that's a weird acronym like crypto i ain't gonna lie crypto got terrible acronyms <laughs> like some of this crypto stuff got terrible acronyms like god dang according to blockchain intelligence platform dap radar polygon recorded 138,000 do alls in march marking an increase of 53 percent from the numbers recorded in february what the hell? Yeah, they're going up. Polygon is now the second largest blockchain after Boomlands Hunter on chain launched on its testnet last month. The action role, the action role playing game has since risen to become one of the top five blockchain games in terms of on chain decentralized app activity. We have some quotes, so I'm going to read them. Quote unquote Polygon, a blockchain previously known for DeFi, for, uh, for DeFi dApps. Overtook Hive this month and secured the second spot. This is a positive sign for Polygon as it is now gaming, gaining recognition as a gaming blockchain. End quote. Wax blockchain retains its seat as the leading gaming blockchain with its dual for dual far surpassing that of Polygon by over 228%. What the hell? Right. So this is important because um, crypto, right? I'm going to tie this in with uh, something a little different. I'm gonna tie this in with with the play way bigger, right? So here we have the dollar. Uh, we might we might get a little political, but here we have the dollar, right? The U.S. dollar. Everybody is saying, "Oh, the dollar is is being threatened right now. It may or may not go down. The value of this and that, blah 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 blah." Okay, cool. But that's not really my concern, right? My concern was the CB is the CBDC thing, right? Everybody is, you know, tripping out about Fed now. And I've been told y'all whatever the case. And the reason why I told y'all just to adapt is because there's nothing you can do now. There is ultimately nothing you can do now outside of positioning yourself to be in a better position when the stuff is in is fully implemented 100 percent Now, the, when once the CBDC comes, right? Because it's a possibility, like understand this. The CBDC is on the table. Fed now. I was watching uh I was watching a clip in this woman she said Fed now is laying out a smooth pathway towards CBDC if that's the case. And it really is. You know, it's going to make for transactions different and I was doing some research afterwards and before this episode I was doing some research. And you know, I was doing some research learning about some stuff. I was trying to get gain a, get enough information and uh and, and calculate and deduce what would happen or like what the situation would be if cbdc in the united states was fully implemented right it was just implemented like what would happen because you got the stock market and then you got the crypto right and the whole thing is with the stock market 
retail investors, consumer, like they're the same thing. If you don't know, a retail investor and a consumer is the same thing. To my understanding, in my opinion, in Dev the Gamer's opinion, it's the same thing. Don't don't go around reciting me as if it's the 100%. Do your own research. But to my knowledge and to my understanding, retail investor and the consumer is the same person. It's the same thing. Now, what happens when CBDC is here, right? And it's in full effect. And your money is being controlled and you are told and or given permission when and when you cannot, how and how you cannot, X, Y, and Z, spend, invest, do whatever. Because at that point, the investing route would have to be um, created for you. The investor route would have to be created for you. So therefore, if it has to be created for you, what? how is that going to affect the stock market? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my whole thing. Now, where does blockchain gaming come into play at? Well, here's the thing. Blockchain gaming and you know, crypto gaming in general comes into play because I think there's going to be a divide, right? Because with the way the U.S. and, and legislation or whatever is going now, they want to ban, you know, whatever digital assets or not really ban them, but they want to put heavy sanctions and heavy requirements and uh, qualifications and certifications and X, Y, and Z on digital assets and crypto, whatever, whatever, whatever. If CBDC comes into play, I'm pretty sure it's going to be that specified pathway designed for you to invest into the stock market if you retail consumer. and if you, you know, it, it might be a, I don't want to say really black market, but we could just say that just for the, for, for understanding purposes, black market, the Coinbase, right? So it's like, oh, if you own Coinbase, well, you know, we, we going to get you if you got Coinbase, we arrest you if you got Coinbase, arrest you if you got uh, Cardano, arrest you if you got this currency, we don't accept this currency here. You know what I'm saying? It's not like these other places around the world, in the world where they accept Bitcoin for whatever purchases. They accept Bitcoin in Brazil. They accept Bitcoin in, you know, over here, overseas, somewhere in the EU, UK. They, they, they accept Bitcoin in all these different places, right? On top of the natural currency. So now, that was, that was my whole thing. And y'all know how I say underground gaming? The same thing is going to happen, but financially. Like, there just, it just might be two different parallel societies. You know how it'd be animes or TV shows where it'd be like, Everybody's walking past each other and everybody seems cool during the day. But at night, you can clearly see the two, you know, this is just one side of the city. But at night, it's a whole different side of the city. It's a different night of the town. It's a different side of the town. That's what's going to happen. That's what I think is going to happen. What's going to happen is if this stuff, not really if, but when this stuff happens, right, it's going to happen. And there's going to be people who use crypto for transactions cryptocurrencies for transactions. So whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, whatever, they go use that and they might just be all in on that digital currency because CBDC is digital currency. So mind you, if everybody going on digital currency, like I've been telling y'all, why not just mess with the crypto anyway? Like it, it really don't make no sense. I told y'all they're going to turn around and be like, hey, we told y'all this is bad. Come fuck with us. I told y'all this. I told y'all this is what they was going to do, but don't nobody want to listen, which is fine. So now what's going to happen? Two different societies. So now everybody might be quote unquote underground living or just other side living. You either going to get with the mainstream or you, you going to be where you be at. Like it just is what it is, you know? And it's just right now, it's just a crucial time in the world, especially in American history, because you know, the bricks, they clicked up. Now shout out to all my people. Shout out to my Brazilians. Shout out to all my Russians. Shout out to all my Asian people. Shout out to all y'all, but y'all clicked up. Y'all clicked up. Y'all wanna y'all wanna click up and y'all wanna try and jump on and get jumped. Well, here's the thing about being jumped though. You gotta put them down. You can't just jump somebody and then they stand back up. So don't let your moves and everything you do be fruitless and for nothing. Cause America, we stand up. That's your ass. What the hell? That's all I'm saying. You never go against home team, and I will never go against home team. So number one, let's just get that understood on that particular conversation. But uh, when it's all said and done, blockchain gaming will um, will play a, a big role in this in just blockchain period because now all these, mind you, what we're about to talk about in uh, level two news is going to be gaming, games digital. Like I, I told y'all, everything is digital. Like gaming is digital, everything digital. Please answer this question. 
when was the last time you got a physical game? Didn't the completionist just buy like everything in Nintendo eShop digitally? Like, but y'all think I'm bullish, right? All right. Hold on, big boom at the front door. Grab chopping the Drake, nigga. Here we go. Here we go. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So y'all gotta put two and two together, man. Y'all gotta y'all gotta put two and two together to come up with fish. And then you gotta go five, six, seven, eight. Okay, which one gonna be great? That's what you gotta understand, man. That's what you gotta understand. But that's what's going to do. <laughs> that made me laugh. But that's gonna do it for level one news. Appreciate you if you made it this far into the show. But before we get into level two news, we got a couple, we got a word from our sponsor. So gaming, art, music. I believe these are some of the most potent forms of expression. I love to create and bring things to life. Can't forget fashion. How we appear lets the world know who we are. Everything I do is who I am. And I'm sharing that with the universe. Welcome to my world. Yes, sir. Make sure y'all go on devthegamer.com. You can also purchase the Amazon discount method. I shared a couple pictures on Instagram where, um, you know, I showed y'all the results because, you know, a lot of people say stuff and they present things and it sound good, but you need proof. So I posted the proof, you know what I'm saying? And because I have other methods in play, I actually have more than what I was telling y'all in that book. So if you get that book, you'll get whatever, you'll earn whatever you get. Then, you know, I may or may not come out with a, a number two of the book, okay? I may or may not come out with a number two of the book and uh, give away that game as well. That way you can double, triple up your, you know, your earnings and all that and uh, help with that. You know what I'm talking about? You know, that's just something, that's, that's my gift to, you know, the people in my, my support, my fans, uh, you know, the people who rock with my content. That's my gift to y'all. The Amazon discount method, it costs $10. That is available on devthegamer.com. Once again, that book, it's an ebook. It's a it's an ebook, so it's digital. Download it onto your phone. The Amazon discount method, ten dollars on datagamer.com. With that being said, let's get into level two news, the main topic. sir level two news the main topic so like i said that previous conversation and that previous that previous topic was going to lead us into here right games going digital everything being digital downloading you know all that stuff right because it is we jumping right into it headline reads sony criticizes cma's irrational decision on microsoft act microsoft's activision blizzard acquisition what the hell yeah they called it irrational so I know I said I wasn't ever going to talk about this again after I gave my thoughts, but we're here now because new information has been shed to the surface. It has come to the surface, floated to the top. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this again is not because I'm going to sit here and bash Microsoft. No, bash the Xbox uh, console. No, it's because we got to talk about what Microsoft is doing. And not only do we have to talk about that, but we have to talk about why what they're doing is so important. Right? So uh let's go ahead and get into it. Microsoft's act uh Microsoft's act acquisition of I cannot read. What the hell? Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard has been met with several mixed reactions from the gaming industry, with some praising Microsoft for its bold move and others expressing concern over the company's growing influence. Sony's criticism of the CMA's decision to approve the deal is the latest pushback Microsoft has faced since the announcement of the acquisition. Sony has criticized the Competition and Markets Authority's recent decision to approve Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard 
calling it, quote unquote, surprising, unprecedented and irrational, end quote. What the hell? I would say surprising and unprecedented, but I wouldn't say irrational. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't say irrational because we're talking about because what we go end up getting into is a whole different conversation. Right. So, um, you know, I need to get down to where is it? Um, no, let me, let me get to it. Cause I, like that call of duty conversation, that debate, that point is beat to the, is beat. Like that's not, that's not the issue here. That's not, that's, that's not what it is. Okay. Right here. Sony's criticism of the CMA's decision to approve Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard is not unexpected. Since the news of the acquisition broke, Sony has been vocal in its opposition to the deal. The company believes that the acquisition will give Microsoft too much power in the gaming industry, particularly in the console market. However, the UK regulator is currently evaluating the takeover's effect on the market for cloud gaming, so Microsoft isn't quite over the line yet. Later this month, on April 26th, the CMA is scheduled to announce its ultimate judgment over Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. While it seems improbable that the CMA will change its mind, the regulator is still evaluating the deal's effect on the market for cloud gaming. It remains to be seen what the ultimate impact of the acquisition will be, but it's clear that there are still many questions and concerns surrounding the deal. Now, that is what the issue is right here, cloud gaming. This is why, and I'm gonna break, we're gonna break this down, why this is more important than the console part, right? Because PlayStation, because Sony put out a, a, a digital version of the PlayStation 5. They came out with a PlayStation 5 with a disc drive, and they came out with a disc, uh, with a PlayStation 5, no disc drive. So you essentially bought a box and you downloaded it onto the storage. At this particular point, you should just get a PC. I'm just saying. Hold up. At this particular point, you should just get a PC or one of these, uh, or a Steam Deck or a Nintendo Switch or something, because at this very point, like I've been told y'all, consoles are not going to go away. They're making way too much money selling Xbox uh, and PlayStation consoles. What's going to happen is this. Consoles are going to continue to come out, but they're no longer going to have disk drives and they're going to be digital only. So now, what does that mean? Whoever has the more IPs can flood their platform and their box with more games. Now, what happens when Microsoft gets Activision Blizzard and now they have Call of Duty, even though this is 10 years past the point, this is 10 years from now, so 2033, 2034, they'd be like, all right, whatever. Now, here's a couple of different factors. Will Call of Duty still be popping by that time? Because it's not so much of the Call of Duty brand anymore that's popping, it's Battle Royale that's popping. Like that format, that Royal Rumble free-for-all format of, of uh, fast-paced, uh, yeah, fast-paced first-person shooters and that type of gameplay is the most popular right now. And everybody is juicing that. So what, you know what I'm saying? Like what's, you know, all this live service, all of this, like all of these different elements, this is what's popping. Who's to say that this type of stuff is still going to be popping in the next 10 years? Who's to say? Y'all got to understand video game development, developing and creating these games take years in itself. So what is going to be it for the next 10 years? You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is for the next 10 years from now to then in the gaming space, what is it going to be now? Uh, Microsoft, Xbox, they are also saying, hey, we're going to give everybody 10 year deals, 10 year deals. We'll put we'll put Call of Duty on everything. That's going to be a hard feat in itself. And they have to do that anyway with Call of Duty just so they can because one, that's going to help approve the deal. Let's keep it real. That'll help approve the deal because it's going to go against Sony's uh, narr narration of they're going to control and do this. So they just showing if we if we show them that we're not off the rip, it's not going to be, you know, it's going to be justified when we do it 10 years from now. And y'all going to be like, hold up. And this is what Sony is saying. Sony is saying, don't fall for the don't don't fall for the juke. You're going to fall for the juke. You're falling for the juke. That's what Sony is saying. You're falling for the juke because 10 years later, you know what they're going to do? They're going to hold it over everybody's head and be like, if you don't get down or lay down with what we're saying, 
you ain't getting on Call of Duty. And then everybody gonna be like, what the hell? And Sony gonna be like, I tried to tell y'all, and then I tried to tell y'all, I tried to tell y'all, I tried to tell y'all, right? These are a couple of different scenarios of things that can happen. Also, not only that, but Xbox, as of right now, if I'm if I remember collect correctly, they have like a 35% market share or percent of the market share in cloud gaming. Like they they I think they have the biggest piece of the pie in the cloud gaming market right now, if I'm not mistaken. Then it's Sony, then GFN, then everybody else. So the whole thing is in the cloud gaming market. Yes, everybody's on Xbox Game Pass, X Cloud. Everybody's doing this, whatever. But this is where everything is digital. Nobody is necessarily buying the game itself anymore. Everybody is just paying for the subscription. So everybody is paying for their permission to play all of these games. You're not buying the one game. You're not buying it game by game anymore. So because you're not buying it game by game anymore, what's happening is Xbox Game Pass, like what is like what, what the, the quality of games is going to be in question. This is the problem. The quality of games are going to be in question. And this is why this is another reason why I'm pushing indie games. I'm pushing indie games because even if they're not the suit coming out of the most infamous, famous AAA big corporation bat company, these games be hard, bro. These games be raw. I'm telling you all these games be raw. Like I got um I got three games in my wish list right now. They're indie games. And the guy on Twitter or the girl or whoever the person on Twitter been venting on Twitter, you know, about just the whole process and the journey of the game. And and I feel for the person, you know, they're a developer, they've been doing it by themselves or the small team they got, whatever the case may be. They've been putting in all this work. And when certain situations come about, as far as, you know, the finances, it's like Dang, I get it, bro. I get it. I get it. I get it. Like, dang, it sucks that that has to be the situation position that you're in. But at the same time, I'd rather you still, and this is if the person sees this or not, and this is just to all indie gamers, indie developers and creators. I'd rather you partner up with some type of publisher and have the game put out versus just racking your head up on the wall trying to get this a certain way. Especially if you've been making quality uh, items and quality games and products or whatever for however long you've been doing this. Your fan base and the people that, that support you and like your game should understand that it's, it was a, you know, it's a particular and specific type of time that the whole creation of that one installment was. You got 50 other games coming out your brain. You got 20 other creations and ideas you're thinking about right now. Don't get hung up on the one. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, all of this is just, it's going to be a digital, 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 digital. Everything going to be digital. So if you're a gamer, you could, you're a consumer per se, understand that you need to, um, you know, figure out what cloud platform, quote unquote, you're going to be on and what's going to make more sense to you. You know, what, what's going, what's going to make more sense. Like that's that's pretty much all it is. Like it's over, bro. What the hell? Like it's over. I don't know what else to tell you. It it just is what it is. This is why I just keep tell. This is why I keep giving y'all solutions. I'm not about to harp over. Oh, each and every detail. Look, we gonna go over a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna talk about some of this stuff. The rest we just gonna skip, and I'm gonna go to the solutions. Everything we skipped is factored in. And look, this is the solution. That's all I got for you. But. All of this matters. And you know what happens when somebody picks up the stick and they new to it? Everything goes new challenger, new fighter, headline reads. Saudi Arabia pumps 38 billion into video games. Hold up. Yeah, you heard that right. 38 billion. Not million, not hundred, not thousand, billion, billion. New Challenger. Saudi Arabia produces 11 million barrels of oil a day in zero video games. What the hell? But that ratio could soon change. The country's public investment, for more crisp and insightful business, okay, blah, blah, blah. 
the country's public investment fund will funnel $38 billion into its esports subsidiary, Savvy Gaming Group, to turn the company into a studio that develops and publishes video games. The gaming market for years now has been bigger than the movie and music industries combined. What the hell? So launching a studio may be, uh, may be a more obvious choice than it might appear as Saudi Arabia develops its economy in areas that don't involve, say, unexpectedly having to slash the output of fossil fuel. Even so, savvy pivoting to developing and publishing games is quite a bold move for the PIF, seeing as Saudi Arabia hasn't exactly been a gaming development mecca. To be sure, if you're going to spin up an entire industry from scratch, a $38 billion investment is not a bad starting point, but there is no guarantees of success. Google, a company that you think would have the capital and nerdy cachet necessary to pull off a foray into the gaming world, shut down its Stadia Cloud gaming division earlier this year, after making barely a dent in the industry. What the hell? Rest in peace, Stadia. Savvy will... Also, yeah, Savvy will, of course, have its own unique hurdles. Saudi Arabia is not home to many game developers, so Savvy will have to pump a lot of capital into talent acquisition. Savvy CEO hinted that the company may adopt the strategy currently favored by Microsoft of hoovering up existing game studios. According to Bloomberg, Savvy has around $13 billion. Again, Savvy has around $13 billion to splash on buying up a publisher. That's 5.5 billion more than Microsoft spent on popular game maker Bethesda in 2021. Hold up. Hey. Out on big boom at the front door. Grab chop in the drake, nigga, here we go. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. If my memory serves me correct, they bought Bethesda for like seven something billion. These people got five more. They got five more. Five more. Now, this is why this is important. Because with Politico going on right now, if y'all understand, like I told you about bricks, shout out to bricks. Y'all ain't got the Gucci main bricks, but shout out to bricks. Um, Here's the thing. If there was a move, right? If there was a move that was saying, hey, look, it's up. This is one of those moves. Now, here's why I say that. I say that because, once again, in the article stated it for me, they have little to no gaming scene over there. Now, here's why this is important. They have all these barrels of oil. They, they, they making mad bread. They making mad bread off this oil, right? So much to the point where, look, they about to put up forty billion, and they got five billion more. Like, bro, 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 understand something? The only thing that's gonna stop them is the same thing that stopped Google, not knowing what the fuck you doing. And listen, I'm, I'm gonna keep, I'm, I gotta give it to you raw, man. Not knowing what the fuck you doing is gonna fuck you up, like. Listen, everybody, look, 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 I'm cussing like a motherfucker now, and I'm speaking how I naturally speak from here on out, even though I've always been doing that. I've just been giving y'all more professional polish. But I got to give y'all this shit because, well, I got my own motherfucking platform, bitch. What the hell? <laughs> oh, it feel good, don't it? So listen, if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, this is going to be problem number one. And this is going to be the problem every step of the way not knowing what the hell you're doing because it ain't easy, man. It is not easy. And this is another reason why I'm supporting indie games because it ain't easy. People putting their lives in this game. I just dropped that icy review and the dude was, you know, saying he put 10 years of the game, his youth gone, just like that. He put 10 years into the game and came out with what he came out with. Now I'm watching this stuff. I'm like, damn, I was like, bro, you could have just put all of this in the game. If you spent 10 years on this and you came up with three different versions, you like, bro, you should have just gave me guns, gave me swords, gave me more than what you gave me, put a little effort into the story. Cool. $10. I would have paid it, but I paid five. But here's the thing. This is coming 
this is coming, this is news coming in the wake of the digital transition in the, in the digital age. So now, 10 years from now, let's say they're successful in starting up, putting games out, acquiring, um, acquiring different developers and publishers. Let's say that, right? Let's say they're successful in doing this. Now, what the, um, now what it is, is who's the top dog? In, this, in the cloud gaming space, who's the top dog? Because you have cloud gaming platforms, you have cloud gaming, um, now, I, now I don't wanna say performancers, but um, you have these companies and the technology and people who have the infrastructure, that's what I'm looking for. The infrastructure to facilitate cloud gaming, right? They can easily be bought just like developers and publishing companies. So at what point do it now go from, all right, we snatching up Bethesda, Bungie, XYZ to we're snatching up Ubitus. <laughs> we're snatching up you, partnership with Google, partnership with GFN NVIDIA, partnership with, bruh, the possibilities. Campbell's chicken soup, possibilities. Hold up. Hey. Bro, Saudi Arabia gonna have possibilities if they actually, if, they, if it actually work and pan out for them. Shout out to all my Saudis. Shout out to all my Arabians. If it pan out for y'all in that space, if it pan out, that's crazy. They got the bread. They got it. See, and this is why y'all gotta understand something when it comes to creating content and doing your own thing and being in the game industry. You got to have money. You got to get money. When you you are an entrepreneur, you doing business, you making these games. Is look all of this stuff that I'm saying is just reasons why I'm supporting indie games, giving them more com coverage, doing whatever. You know, day after day, I be thinking about saying fuck my YouTube because I know that channel ain't never gonna get monetized. That channel is never gonna get monetized, bro. I'm gonna be at 400, 500 forever, and it is what it is, bro. I'm gonna keep putting out content. I'm gonna keep putting out whatever. You want to know why? Because that's 400 to 500 people that's going to see this shit. That's in between 400 to 500 people that'll see that notification, that'll see that, that'll see that, that'll see it. They, they, they go, they, they're going to see it. They're going to see it. So why not keep putting this out? Keep putting my content out. Keep putting this awareness out. Keep putting this out. Keep putting this out. Keep putting this out. And see? And, and this is why indie games, you know, it's a lot of indie independent developers out here, whether they one person or a group, it's a lot of, it's a lot of people out here putting in a lot of work. It's one of the reasons why I made the indie corner. You know, I, I, you know, talk about what the game is, you know what I'm saying? And Hey, look out for this. I think this is cool. It looked like this, you know, gameplay was like, come on, man, I do this, but I also got to make the bread too. So, you know, when it comes to making content and just the gaming space in general, whether you make a content or whether you make the game, understand that the business got to be done and you got to get that business right so on the business side of things saudi arabia could fuck up because they may or may not know what what they doing this it's always there google what they what, a billion trillion dollar company something like that they ain't know what the hell they was doing they ain't even know what they had was stated and it's gone what the hell they ain't know what they was doing xbox seemed to got it right PlayStation seemed to got it right. You know, Sony and them got it right. Microsoft got it right. NVIDIA apparently got it right. Boosteroy got it right. Like, uh, all these other different cloud platforms for different types of games, apparently they got it right because they are sustainable or reaching sustainability, something. They, they got it right. Granted, we all know Google got a terrible track record with, with products and items. We know this. So let's, um, so let's, let's end it like this. Every like they, I think Saudi Arabia will have a harder, a harder trek through the waters than Google had because Google put out Stadia in a time where it's it's not really like a, you know, it's the reaction isn't. Wait, you bought the physical copy? Like that's not the reaction. You know what I'm saying? Like if you still buy the physical copy today, it's like, are right, you you still got the game? But everybody notices, and we all see this transition and everything going digital dollar going digital like everything going digital bro so mind you they have 
tougher decisions to make in the sense because do when they swipe up these publishers and developers or they start putting in this money to facilitate, I said facilitate, to facilitate and push out their own video game content and stuff like that, do they invest in or entertain physical copies or do they just say, all right, you know what, Evan, let's get our own cloud servers, our own cloud this, our own cloud that, and have all these people put out stuff on the cloud or just digital, download it digitally. They download the files, they pay and download the files like Steam, like Epic, like, you know what I'm saying? Is I, I think they got a lot of more, um, a lot of, they got that. And then it's also the quality of games. That's, that's, I think that's going to reign overall, the quality of games, because you can have a lot of money, you can have a lot of capital and you can flood money into anything. Like you can flood money into not into anything. But if it's not quality, it's not, it's not going to be worth it. It's not going to be worth it. Like I put out the gamers then, I put out gaming content, I do all this stuff. And then outside of the gaming realm, I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur. So with that being said, you know, I got different kinds of businesses and different type of ways I'm, I'm trying to bring in money to fund this. But I also got to be able to pay my bills or do whatever I got to do and be able to I can do what I got to do. So with that being said, you know, let's get to the point now with some of those other things where I'm, I might be able to work with just brand new items, like brand spanking new, like brand spanking baby new. Brand spanking baby new. Br I'm talking about brand new. Like I can, like I, I might just be the plug on brand new items. I'm not even gonna lie. It's, it, it's looking like it's gonna get to the point where I'm the plug for brand new items, but it's but I'm legit. Like we ain't got to do no back channels, no back alley, no, you know, you know some person, friend of a friend. Oh, yeah, you gotta go over here, black market. No, I'm legit. I'm legit. Like I it's like I gotta crack the code. It's like I didn't crack the code and now it's legit. And I know people be like, oh man, that's too good to be true. But I'm like, hey, I know it's too good to be true, but I'm me. I'm the guy himself. I'm player one, the guy himself, aka the unofficial official professional of all things video games and technology. I, what, what you want me to do? I ain't gonna do nothing you want me to do anyway. But what I'm saying is, look, I can get it like this, rock with it, or you don't. Because when you want it, it's probably gonna be gone. So, you know what I'm saying? And doing all these other different things, you know, just to, you know, staying above water is the main goal, maintaining everything is moving. I, I worked so hard. It was, it's like, I, like I said, like I told you, I was like a year and a half. of just nothing but working, entrepreneurship, saving money, moving money, doing money, investing money, all this stuff here. Now I put out the website and now when I, and mind you, this is the most successful launch of my website I didn't had in 10 years. I know y'all gonna be like, hold up. Hey. 10 years ago was 2013. Since 2013, I've been making websites and I've been putting them out, be like, hey, you can download my music here. You can buy clothes here. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. I've been doing this like every so many months or every so many years within this 10 year time frame. This is the third or fourth website I didn't create it and put out, but this is the best launch. This is the best one, the best reaction, the best analytics, the best everything, because one, I didn't give up. I didn't quit. Two, I learned and I kept trying. I, I failed, went back to the drawing board, came back even bigger. Failed, went to the drawing board, came back even bigger. And now, not only am I putting it out, it's official. I got the domain name. But I can also upload content uncensored. I can upload any type of content on here. I can now not only express myself truly and not have to worry about censorship or uh, these other platforms. I can do whatever the fuck. I can do whatever. Dead ass. I can say whatever and do whatever on my platform. And now what I'm getting ready to do, you know, the next, you know what I'm saying? And it's only up from here. The direction we're going in is only up from here. You know, it's going to take a lot more work, but now I'm here. And now this is the level I'm at. I'm maintaining this level and it's going up from here. So that's the whole thing I want to tell everybody. That's an indie gamer, content creator, the Saudis, everybody. One, don't go against home team. Two, don't rack your brain on the one thing. Don't get hung up on the one thing. Three, know what the fuck you're doing. Because if you don't, you're going to fail. 
And that's going to be the reason why you fail, period. Four, kick down the door. <laughs> Hold up. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Gamers Den. Appreciate you if you made it this far to the end of the show. Once again, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe wherever you see this show at or you see the clips. Once again, if you're on DeadToGamer.com, shout out to you, man. Appreciate you for coming to DeadToGamer.com. Appreciate you for rocking with the God. Make sure you, you know, listen to the music. Make sure you listen to the, uh, you know, you watch the shows, the videos. You share this website. You tell everybody to lock in, tap in with DeadToGamer.com. You, uh, you know, tell everybody about the book, the Amazon Discount Method. Amazon Discount Method is available right now. Number two may be on the way. Who knows? Um, you know what I'm saying? YouTubes, Twitters, Instagrams. All that too. Got all that regular too. Um, you know what I'm saying? Hey, just more work being done and more content is on the way. So with that being said, I'm gonna catch y'all next time. Go. Oh.